precious and semi-precious gemstones. Wait, how can you tell the difference between a precious and semi-precious gemstone anyways? What do those terms even mean? And how can someone spot the difference between garnet and spinel or topaz and tourmaline? I'll teach you how to identify a gemstone in Mordor. Okay, that's the last of the Lord of Rings puns for today. Let's get this out of the way. Traditionally, the precious gemstones are diamond, emerald, ruby, and sapphire. Semi-precious gemstones are everything else. Is it just me or does this classification seem pretty arbitrary? After all, ruby and sapphire are technically the same gemstone, corundum, and emerald, a beryl, is considered precious, but other beryls, like aquamarine, aren't. It gets even more dicey when you look at opal. Opal that exhibits play of color is called precious opal, but it's not considered a precious gemstone. What is going on here? No two gems are the same, and since the days of the ancients, humans have done our best to classify and categorize them. The precious and semi-precious distinction goes back to the ancient Greeks. But instead of blindly following tradition, let's evaluate gems based on their own merits. After all, isn't the world's finest sunstone more precious than a low-grade Big Four gem? There is no universal system for determining the value of a gemstone, precious or otherwise. From a seller's point of view, gemstone's price and value will generally be decided by color, rarity, and clarity. They also look for defects in the stone, its overall quality, and of course, its beauty. Many gemstone buyers still adhere to the four C's when on the hunt for a good deal. They note a gem's cut, color, clarity, and carat weight. But what if you're not out to buy a gem? Maybe you tripped over a pirate's treasure chest in your day-to-day -day adventures. Is there any way you can identify which gems are which without the help of a professional like me? Before you start, the first thing to do is clean your stone with a soft gem cloth. This will remove dirt, dust, fingerprints, oils, lint, and fairy droppings from your stone so you can get a proper look at it. And once the gem is clean, hold your stone with tweezers. The ancients were right about one thing. Observing a gem's color is the first and easiest clue when it comes to identifying a stone. Try to observe your gem with just your naked eye, either in daylight or a very well-lit area. Color is the most obvious way to start identifying a gem or mineral. After all, if it isn't green, it isn't an emerald, and all rubies are red by definition. Hue is the overall color of a gem, but be specific. Is it blue or blue-green or greenish blue? The more precise, the better. If the stone appears black and you suspect it might actually be a dark red, green, or blue, you can shine a light through it to search for hard-to-see colors. Now you have to decide if your stone is transparent, translucent, or opaque. Jade would be a translucent gem, and onyx is opaque. For transparent gems, let's look to see if there's fire or dispersion. If you see fire in your stone, you might have a diamond, or even a rare sphalerite, or a demantoid garnet. And this might be my favorite part. Bounce the stone in your palm a little bit to see how heavy or light it feels, as an on-the-go test of specific gravity. The next steps involve the light and the loop. We're gonna take a quick peek at optical phenomena and luster. Pass the light across the surface of the stone and check for color change, asterism, agilorescence, venturescence, and other special characteristics. The light will also help you assess the gem's luster, which is how much light is reflected from the surface. Most gems have a vitreous luster, like glass. If your gem has a lower luster, it may be dull, waxy, or earthy. If it has a higher luster, it may be adamantine. If you notice any chips in the gem, describe the surface on the inside of the chipped area too. Is it curved like a shell, splintery like wood, or grainy like sand? Most gems show conchoidal or shell-like fractures, so more unusual fracture types can help you narrow down your possibilities. Assessment beyond this is where the big guns come in. Refractometer prices range from affordable to I need a government grant. And determining a gemstone's refractive index is one of the best ways to know for sure what you've got between your tweezers. I try not to editorialize in these videos. As much as I love my own opinions, the facts are the facts. But I think there's one very important question you should ask yourself when you're identifying and assessing gemstones. It's a toughie. The question that is, do I think this specimen is beautiful or interesting? Hopefully the answer will be yes. Give me your best Lord of the Ring puns and jokes in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe. For more information on the topics we discussed today, check out the links below. Thanks for watching.